Hello everyone, uh, my name is Pastor Lou, I'm from Cross Culture Church. Uh, last Sunday, uh, the 29th of March, I did a sermon on uh, Titus chapter 2, uh, the gospel impact in the home. The main message uh, from Titus chapter 2 was we need to live out the gospel in our everyday life. We need to live it out at home, uh, at work, in all that we do. The gospel is when we, we look back to what Jesus has done for us on the cross and we remember that he has paid for our sins. But we also look forward to when Jesus will return again and he'll be fully glorified and everyone will know that Jesus is is Lord of all and we will be with him forever in heaven as we look at those two aspects of Christ and the gospel that is what enables us to live our daily lives in conformity with the good news of Jesus seeking to be his disciples here today and every day now each week we also have a Q&A a question time after the sermon well, we do that in order to dig a bit deeper so that we can have a better understanding of God's word in our lives. So let me, uh, first of all, read to you the first question. Thank God for you and the sermon. I really have things where self-control is most needed. Having connection with people is great, but with the struggle is mostly when I'm alone and stressed. Please could you give me practical advice on overcoming temptations when external support is not available. Well, I think that external support is still available even in a time when we're, uh, many of us are confined uh, at home. We can still be, of course, on, uh, on the telephone, we can uh, use uh, Facebook uh, Messenger, we can uh, also use obviously WhatsApp, uh, chat and, and Zoom to be in touch with people, to keep uh, those kinds of accountability relationships uh, continuing to go. Uh, but getting practical, you know, I think the most important thing is to have an accountability partner, a mentor, uh, someone who that you can go to for help and spiritual support, but also someone who will keep you accountable, uh, particularly if you have one or more areas of sin uh, that you're struggling with uh, at a moment in time. Uh, so please uh, ask your mentor, uh, give them permission in fact, uh, that they can challenge you about this particular area of your life and ask you in detail about what you've been doing in that area. And that can really help uh, all of us in, uh, in our struggles with sin in our lives. Of course, we need to pray each day uh, as well. And uh, my encouragement to you would be to pray uh, that part of the Lord's Prayer uh, which says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We can ask God each day, Lord, please do not lead me into temptation. Make sure that I'm not even tempted because I don't know if I can handle it today. Uh, next, we need to prepare ahead of time. We need to have a plan for when I am tempted. Know what I'm going to do when I get tempted. Each time I'm tempted, I'm going to pray. Stop what I'm doing and pray. Uh, or perhaps I'm going to stop and read uh, a portion of scripture. Or perhaps there's a scripture that you've memorized that you can uh, uh, meditate on in your head at that moment uh, when you're tempted. In uh, Matthew chapter 18, it says, uh, if your eye causes you to sin, then gouge it out. Now, it's very much a metaphor, but it just shows how serious we really need to be about sin in our lives. You know, we need to sometimes take very extreme measures uh, to counteract sin, to, to, to dig sin out of our lives. So boundaries are very important for us. You know, there's boundaries that we can put in our life to, to help us overcome uh, those times of uh, temptation in our lives or to limit uh, the amount of temptation uh, that comes into our lives. And that can be in a number of ways. Perhaps it's uh, to stop ourselves from uh, watching a particular program, going to a particular place, you know, whatever it is that causes that temptation, find a way to stop it. Uh, find someone who might even be able to help you uh, to do that in the first place. But of course, most importantly, is growing our relationship with God day by day. As we become more like Jesus, then uh, 
areas of sin in our lives, um, uh, the Holy Spirit will overcome those in our lives and we will grow uh, through that. It may be to then find other areas that we need to work on. But growing in our relationship with God each day is just so important. So make sure that you have that very consistent time of, of reading God's Word meditating on it, uh, praying to the Lord regularly and, and growing in your relationship with Him. You know, dig through God's Word and see how God's Word can apply to you uh, each and every day. I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, our next question. Hi, Pastor Lou. Thanks for the great sermon this morning. Both me and my husband are staying at home with our seven-month-old. We plan to do a Bible study session each day at home. We'd love to ask you about where to start and which way to do it, please. Uh, many thanks. That's a great thing to do, isn't it, at a time like this. It's fantastic to, to perhaps be able to spend more time in, uh, uh, in Bible study, in, in spending time, uh, certainly with a spouse, in doing Bible study uh, together. I'm assuming you're not uh, meaning uh, that it'll be with your uh, seven-month-old child. Obviously, with a seven-month child, they have a, a very short uh, attention span. Uh, what we did, certainly when our children were that young, is that we would uh, sing a Christian song to them. We would read a Bible storybook and just pray for them uh, as well. So for you two as a couple, doing a Bible study uh, each day is a great thing for you to do. Now, make sure that you plan a, a consistent time when you can do that. Make sure it's a time when you're going to be able to do it. And make sure there are no distractions uh, that will be in the way of that. Uh, you know, put work on hold, put, put the phone on hold, and make sure it's a time uh, when your seven-month-old is sleeping. Work out what uh, study that you want to do. That's the first thing you need to do. Now, it might be to go through a book of the Bible. It might be a particular topic uh, that you feel is important for the two of you at a time like this. Uh, there's... There's topics that you can choose perhaps to develop uh, yourselves in terms of your marriage, in terms of your parenting. Uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5 in particular is very good for couples to go through uh, as a married couple. Uh, but there's a lot of materials out there. You can get things on the internet. You can also get them, uh, of course, from your Christian bookshop. Make sure that it's a devotional Bible study. And when I say devotional Bible study, that means that we are looking at the scriptures in order to find uh, what it is that I need to do to change my life to become more like Jesus Christ. This is not just an academic uh, discussion, but we want to dig into God's Word so that we can actually apply it to our lives as well. And then, you know, as a couple, this will be an important time for you to be able to just reflect on God's Word together. Make sure that you, that you listen to each other as, as you um, share with one another. Um, your views and, and your understanding of, uh, of what you are studying of God's Word. What I find is that really your spouse is the best person to challenge you uh, about your spiritual growth in your life. So it's a wonderful thing to have a relationship in which we're able to do that, to challenge one another about our spiritual growth. No one else will you know you as well as your spouse or spends uh, the kind of time with you that your spouse does. You know, we really want God's word to, to nourish us in, in such a way uh, that we are able to change and to become more like Jesus Christ ourselves. And that's the important thing that we are seeking to do when we do these studies together. Of course, the most important thing is to finish your time uh, praying for one another. It's good to spend quite a bit of time praying for each other as well. Uh, praying for all the needs that you have in your own life, of course, but in particular as well. Uh, not just praying for your family, but praying for your spouse's spiritual growth and areas uh, that they may find challenging at this point in time. No one else is going to really pray for you as much about your spiritual growth as your spouse will. Let's go on now to our third question. Hi. I was just wondering about verse 5 in uh, Titus chapter 2. Do you need to take the phrase working at home literally in our society today? Why does God separate men and women so much if we are created equal? 
I want to really thank you uh, for that question. It's really a, a very important question uh, from our uh, passage. Now, the emphasis of the passage, or particularly uh, verses uh, 4 and 5, is that younger women, you know, if they're married, if they have children, then they uh, uh, need to make sure that they don't neglect their family, their, their husband, uh, their children, uh, their home. Uh, it's not saying here that a woman can't work outside of the home. For example, if you look at uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 31, you see there uh, the woman of noble character who most certainly did uh, work outside of the home. And of course, in this passage, uh, it tells us that the reason that we do this is it so that we will not, um, uh, so that the word of God will not be uh, reviled, so that our married life, our home life, is a wonderful example uh, to the community around us. Then you also uh, mentioned in your question, why does God separate uh, men and women so much, even though they are created equal? Now, I assume that you're looking at that part in uh, verse 5, which uh, talked about young women being um, submissive to their own husbands. First, I'd like to say that this passage, of course, doesn't contain all that the Bible says about uh, the um, the life of a husband and wife together uh, in marriage. It only says uh, one part, there's other parts in the Bible, particularly Ephesians chapter 5, uh, that tell us uh, more than this passage. This is just emphasizing uh, some aspects of that relationship. Now, a husband and wife are very much equal in every way. But what the Bible tells us is that they both have a different role in a marriage uh, relationship. A wife is to voluntarily submit herself to the leadership, to the headship of her husband. It's not, uh, it's not saying here that the husband must force her to do that. It's her voluntary uh, decision to make, to voluntarily submit to her husband. Uh, that's what the Bible tells us uh, to do. But it doesn't mean that headship is uh, you know, a man being a person who's just authoritative and dominant uh, over his wife or his family. In fact, this headship uh, very much relates to uh, taking responsibility uh, for our family. It means uh, lovingly caring for our children uh, and our wife and taking that overall responsibility and, and making sure uh, that the family uh, go, is going well, uh, both physically and, and uh, emotionally, but also, of course, so importantly, spiritually uh, as well. You know, when a couple are together in marriage and doing exactly that, when they are together in this kind of way, and the Bible tells us that that is a wonderful uh, reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church. And it is also a reflection to the community around us about how God made a marriage to be a great witness for the incredible gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, I do hope that uh, these answers have uh, assisted uh, all those who asked them, of course, uh, but also uh, to you listening here today as well. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you.